Well, this is your second time at the Nexus Institute. Um, what do you think makes the Institute special and um, why do you think it's important that it exists? I think there's many reasons for that. I mean, first and absolutely first and foremost is, uh, is Rob Riemann, who is an absolutely crucial figure, I think, in Europe generally at the moment, who uh, one of the very few people I know that has the courage to, to question things that nobody actually dares to question and to say things that nobody dares to say and raise discussions on, on subjects which are absolutely crucial from a point of view which is not biased but actually interested in a, in a true and sincere exchange on, on, those, on those matters and that's the only way to actually come forward and, and reach any sort of progress on, on political, cultural and social themes and I tremendously admire his work and I think that his, his work basically gives a spirit to the Institute in many, many ways and I think it's very important to, um, that a place which is not affiliated with a particular direction, but with a, just with a sheer interest of questioning things and raising um, and, and creating such different uh, situations and contexts where such a discussion, such an exchange can, can happen, uh, exists. I think very, very often you, these things happen with a certain agenda, with a certain uh, a goal. And I think the most beautiful thing about all Nexus projects that I've been either involved with or have seen that you never know what's going to happen. It's not, there is no clear goal with it. It's, the idea is to bring very, very, a very diverse group of people together, throw them at each other and see what happens. You know you will be further than where you started. And I think that's extremely important. Oh, thank you for that. Um, what has Nexus meant to you personally? Um, it meant many different things. Um, first of all, uh, I will never forget the day when a few years ago uh, Rob suddenly calls me up and says, well, Mr. Salonen just cancelled. Uh, would you step in and do this, uh, this masterclass with the, with the members of the Concertgebouw Orchestra uh, on, on Mahler? And I was, first of all, completely overwhelmed by that. I mean, I was, I was very, very young and uh, it was a huge responsibility as well, considering, first of all, the topic. And the fact that somebody saw in my work um, the, the, the tr sort of, let's say, the true core of it and gave me the, that chance and had trusted me with that kind of task um, was, first of all, very moving and important for me personally, but also showed me that there is actual interest in the kind of discussion that I would like to, uh, to, to raise. And um, it's very rare to find people that are interested or willing to risk to that extent, that just say, I don't care if this person is famous, I don't care if this person is, uh, you know, has the right political connections. It's about, I think that what this person is doing is right and it has to be supported. And threw me straight into the, you know, most, I would say, most critical and, 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 and um, in a way, many ways, uh, also sort of dangerous, uh, uh, let's say, spot, you know, and said, you know, go do your thing and, and knew that it's going to work out. And that is, th that courage is something I tremendously admire. And I, I've in many ways seen it also as, a, as an example to follow in my own work and, uh, and try to promote and encourage people that I believe in regardless of where they come from and what they have already achieved. Wonderful. Uh, my final question, um, this symposium that we're having right now, it's about building, about education. Um, what do you consider uh, essential in any education? I think I could talk for three hours to oh answer dear. that question. Mm. <laughs> well. um, I, I'll tell you just one anecdote, which I think will, 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 <laughs> will summarize the whole thing. Um, when Rob asked me to write this essay, um, I first of all wrote on something completely different from what he asked me to write on, that's what usually happens. And, but just out of, as, a, as a, my very first initiative was, I wanted to look up in the dictionary, in a thesaurus, and see what is the definition in a typical English dictionary of education. And then it says something along the lines of, um, the act of teaching somebody something in a school. Mm -hmm. And I remember I was so shocked by that sentence. Basically, so the stuff you learn in school is what a dictionary sees as education. That was, for me, the first, the first impulse to actually question what is it that we are, we are giving or we are, um, in a way, leaving for, for the next generations to have what is, what is our cultural identity, what is, our, how, what is knowledge, how do we define knowledge, how do we define, is, I mean, we've <coughs> we're living in times where I think most people consider information to be knowledge, and that is something that, that I think is profoundly mistaken, and, and how, what is knowledge actually become. Um, and I found the whole, the whole uh, occupation with, this, with this, this topic extremely inspiring to realize that knowledge has very little to do with facts and with information and education has also in, in its broader sense very little to do with knowledge but with an actual form of identity. And um, 
on that I could elaborate at length, but I will. I'll let you do that in the symposium. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, now I'll go smoke.